everyone. Welcome back. I uh, just got this dropped off from a customer, this uh, slant top desk. We're going to paint it. We're going to leave the inside natural. Uh, she dropped off a chair. It also needs uh, a small amount of work. You can see there's a lot of rub marks here. Uh, I'm just going to clean the chair up. I'm not going to paint the chair. I think it's a... Uh, an old chair and it deserves to stay just the way it is but the slant top desk needs a lot of work uh, I'm going to bring you guys along I think I need to adjust the quote I told her once I got it into the shop I would contact her back and uh, she's gonna move forward anyways but I didn't see the damage on the top to the veneer which just means I need to use some filler but I have to adjust the quote so all right let's get to it you guys can see this edge that's coming up if I was doing a restoration I would be gluing this down but I've already removed a little piece here to see how far back we have to go and then I'll fill this in with putty and straighten it out I think it's pretty darn good the way it is tap on the veneer you can hear the noise if it's loose little loose piece right there okay I don't know if you guys can see the alligator on the top here I might just take a scraper or hit it with a sander so if you do that and you expose this natural raw wood you are going to have to hit it with uh, some st some <clears throat> so if you see the natural wood no so if you expose the natural wood on here you're gonna have to hit this with some spray shellac so let's try this out with the sander and see what we get. I'm just gonna sand this with some 150. I know it's a little aggressive. Um, but yeah, we just wanna get some of this alligator off. a little rough. I can use a little filler on that too. Well I'm trying a new filler instead of using my Bondo. Not a fan of trying something new but uh, let's see what we got here. We are painting this so it doesn't really matter. Ooh this stuff is stinky. I'm gonna have to put my mask on. Hang on, guys. And anytime I add filler, I always like to leave it proud. So when it hardens, I just go right over it with a sander and it makes it nice and smooth. So let's let this dry and we'll get right back to it. This is the putty I'm using, DAP, plastic wood. My first time, let's see how it works. I really like the, uh, the Bondo. You can mix up a tiny, tiny bit, but we'll see if this works better. It's already pre-mixed. I don't know if it'll be easier, 
hotter. Who knows? Let's see how durable this is. All right, it's been quite some time, <coughs> half an hour or so, since I put this on here. I'm going to just use a little bit of 220 sandpaper um, to do it to see how this stuff works. And then if I feel confident that I'm not going to just rip it all apart, I'll use my, uh, my electric sander. Yeah, it's pretty hard. All right, let's use the sander. You can do a lot more uh, finesse with that. I'm going to use 220 on the sander as well. It works for me. That feels good. Okay. I'm going to give this a little spritz with the uh, shellac. The shellac seals in the tannins so it doesn't have bleed through. And it'll also help to cover up the patches, blend them in more. You guys can see that a couple of cat scratches I'm gonna cover those two with some shellac because that'll just bleed right through you can check anywhere else real quick to see if there's any raw wood looks like it's pretty good okay now that I got the patchwork done on the top I'm gonna give this a good cleaning I use crud cutter And let me just grab a rag. So basically, I just throw some on my on my sponge. I'm just trying to get any um, you know furniture polish, fingerprints from grease any of that stuff off. Because when you use chalk paint, it bonds really well, but not to dirty surfaces. So clean, 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 clean. This will really show you what came off of the dirt. Now I'll let this dry. She gave me a paint chip. So I'm going to go over, pick out my paint. Yeah, look at 
You guys can see all that on the towel. And if you need to get into the uh, the crevices here, grab a toothbrush. It works perfect. So basically, let's see, I just got, actually these were some old denture toothbrushes. So just hit the water, go over it real quick, and it'll come right out and you can wipe it off with a rag. And then I like, I like to give this another uh, rub down. Just had a visitor for a second. Now let's see, clean. This has already been wiped down, but I'm gonna give it one more shot. And you absolutely do not have to do this. You can just leave it and let it dry. I put my word on what I do, so I would never let a piece leave my house unless it would survive inside my own house. Hey, look at that. That was just from wiping it off a second time. I'm just gonna give the inside a little wipe up because it's dust and stuff. And I'll do a better cleaning. And after I'm done painting the outside, I will um, oil the inside. I'll clean it up. I'll fix any scratches. And then I'll, uh, I'll oil it. We'll do that together. I'm thinking I'm going to take off the escutcheon. I might need a I might need a better tool than that. Hold on a second. Nothing like the old five and one. These are awesome. They work for everything. I've had this one for probably 10 years. Okay, made a little scratch right there. I'm gonna take the handles off too. I mean, I know these aren't original, but I think what I'm going to do, let's see what I do with the sandpaper. So you can see the little discussion here. It's old, it's antique, but you wanna brighten this up. You can hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. You can also hit it with some steel wool. You just keep on going until it gets to the color that you want. Look at that. Can you guys see that? It just brightened it up. So let's take off the uh, hardware too. When I take the hardware off, I always put the screws back into the same hole as it came out of. Because if somebody has changed the screws, you'll never get them to fit properly. So just take them out, put them right back into the handles, well, and you won't lose them. But there's a lot of antique hardware that you need uh, to keep the positioning as they change out the, uh, the screws as they get loose over the years. So it's good to put it right back into the original side. And I'm going to show you this. This this is not this is not old. You can see it's kind of like a bronzy, black, antiqued look. So I'm going to hit it with a little sandpaper. Let's see if we can get these to look a little nicer. 
Sometimes it doesn't take much. Yeah, see, that brightens it right up. I'm going to show you one side. And of course, I'm going to take my time and do these a lot better. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. See that? That's not sanded. See how it just brightens up all the high spots? Matches it to the, uh, to the little discussion. It's just the, uh, the finishing touches. So she didn't want to change the hardware. I was going to paint the hardware the same color as the, as the desk, but it took a little bit of control, and I'm going to do it this way and see how she likes it. Sometimes the customers don't always know exactly what they want. They know kind of what they want, but when it comes down to the details, sometimes the artists have to do, you know, what they think is going to work for the piece. So we're going to use these old handles, which are not old, they're new, but I'm going to try to use them up a little bit. Creative freedom, that's what I was looking for. Let's see if you guys can see the difference. Actually, let me just wipe this off. Can you see the difference? This one's sanded. And this one is not. There you go. You can see it right there. So this is a little more, I don't know, nicer for the piece. This is just kind of like, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. So, all right, let's get this other one done. Another awesome tool is these little brass brushes. Obviously, you can see mine has had seen better days. Um, but they're fantastic when you need to get into the grooves. So I'm going to try this a little bit, see if I can get down there and really make these pop some more. All right, I got them done. I don't know if you guys see the difference. Just updates them. Makes them look like where people have touched them, has worn them down. Very nice. All right, let's clean up the mess we made, and then we're going to run to the store, get our paint, and uh, get to it. Oh, that's much better. I love it nice and clean. I also talk about shop safety a lot. Don't leave your cords around. I know we sand and then we get into something else. We get really busy. We leave the sander on the floor and the dust collection and then you're going over to your cabinet or getting something and you trip on it. So be very careful. Um, ear protection. Always wear your respirator. If you have to do something in a shop that's going to be really stinky, try to do it at a point in the day where you can leave. So I don't have any ventilation in my shop. So I try to do anything Bondo, stain, anything that's going to have vapors that you shouldn't be breathing in. I wear my respirator and then I leave for the day. Sometimes it's unfortunate because you'll wake up in the morning and have to do something right away in the morning. That means your shop is completely off limit all day. And you know, time is money. So try to do it at a point where you can leave. If it's the summertime and it's just fumes, I don't have to worry about dust. I can open all the doors and let the air come through here and clear it out real quick. Um, but if it's a finish like polyurethane or something that's going to take a while and can't have any dust and, and dirt moving around. I can't open the doors, so I have to leave for the day. Just take that into consideration when, when working with stuff. You know, cancer is rampant. You don't want to have it in your lungs. Really wear gloves when you do stuff. It doesn't matter if it's whatever, beeswax, any kind of anything, even when you're painting. 
A lot of people get it all over their hands. Try to wear some gloves. If you're a neat painter and you don't get paint on your hands, you're all right. But paint is a chemical. It absorbs into your skin. I don't have to preach to you guys. I'm just concerned that I want you guys to try to do the right thing. Anyways, let's stop babbling. I'm going to get to the store, uh, pick up the paint, and then we'll be right back and get to it. <clears throat> On second thought, before I grab the paint, I'm going to check out this little chair. I'm going to use my trusty little brush here to get in the grooves to clean out the seat, just to get rid of any dust and debris that could be in there. You just want to be gentle. as the seat is in very good condition. Well, the seat's not in bad shape. You can see here, it has some scratches from where it was pushed up against the desk, or a desk, because it's definitely not high enough for that one. So I'm gonna get some stain and we're going to fill this in and disguise it. Now sometimes I'll just use my stain markers to see if I can get a good match. Let's see what we got here. Sometimes I like to try something a little bit lighter first. That's not, that's not horrible. Some of the spots, I like them to be a little darker. It's actually not, it's not doing too bad of a job. There's obviously different types of woods on here. which will require different stain blendings, but it's actually not horrible. Just trying to enhance it. I'm not trying to change the chair. Yeah, you can see the problem here. Let's see if we can blend this in. All right. Let's try it. Good match. Now, if this chair had a lot of graining on it, I would come in and do some more color matching. See how much better that looks? All this area here look just like that. I don't know if you can see the scratches along here as well. These ones could use darker. See how that's not really covering? So let's do a little darker.
pretty darn good to me. Let's get this. Let's get this problem here. I think I'm going to hack just a tiny bit. I'm going to use a little bit of my scratch coat oil. And I have a little brush, just an old chip brush. I use it just for this. So it's soft. It never gets hard because it's just oil. But you can get it right into the grooves really well. And be careful what you get this stuff on. You don't want to be splattering it all over the place. Because it will stain other things. I just like to get it into the cracks, hard to reach areas, and then the rest I use the rag. And I leave this in here because anything it'll touch, and you don't want to touch that rush seat, you'll ruin the seat once you stain it. This covers in any other scratches you might have. Well, that's much better. Hopefully you guys can see better here. I'll see down in the cracks here again. Great little chair. I'm going to try to look the history up on it. Cheese. Don't want to cover up all the character. And I'll let this sit on here and then wipe it back. later on once it's soaked in really nice I'm definitely happy with that for sure all righty looking good how do you guys like it Let me know if you have any questions or what I use or any special techniques. Just giving it another once over in case you missed something. Yeah, I like it. Very cute. I'm not sure if it's Victorian, um, but I'll look it up. It's a small chair. It's not a large chair. So it makes me think that it either goes to a vanity or a desk or maybe possibly a small dining set. Like an informal, you know, the smaller dining set that would go in the kitchen. I'm not really sure. I'm going to see if I can find it on Google. If you guys have any information, leave it down in the comment section. I appreciate all the help you guys give me when locating items. Sometimes you can find them on Google. Sometimes I'll spend two or three days looking up something and finally find it. It's like, ah, oh, you just got to change the wording, you know? So these gloves, they go right in the container here. And do your best not to touch them because you're going to get them all over yourself. Designated just for oil and brushes and everything. And actually, don't touch the thing without a glove either. Let me give this just a little wipe down. It's been on here long enough. Just to remove the excess. We don't want anybody sitting on this and getting their clothes all stained. 
Beautiful. What do you guys think? Chair looks fantastic. All right, let me show you the chair. This is where I did a lot of the disguising right here. You guys see that? And right here. And all over the whole chair, but these were the two really bad spots. So I think it looks great. All right, let's get to the store and get our paint and start painting our desk. All right, I just got back from Home Depot. Got the color here. Beautiful color. Um, one thing, don't paint out of the can. Always have yourself a pot, paint pot, old bowl, whatever. You don't want to contaminate your paint. You can always add more paint. And you can also get it out of the rim here. Keep this nice and clean. I just push it on there just to keep it closed enough. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, I'm going to do my best to stay out of the shot, but we'll see how it goes. Just one more thing. Um, if you get chalk paint on some place that you're not going to paint, it comes right off with water. Even if it already dried and it's a couple days old, just take a wet rag and you can wipe it right off. So you can be careful, but you don't have to be super careful where you get it onto. Just pay attention to the edges. But like I said, if you get it over onto this, it's okay. So even if you paint this up like that, and you decide, I don't know, maybe you did some weird thing with your brush and it kind of went in like that, you can just take it right off with a rag. It's very easy. It doesn't stain or anything. Okay, in between coats, I got the first coat done. I always get a wet rag, t-shirt, whatever you want. And when you paint, try to stay out of the top of the brush. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. See how the paint is down here? That's the way you want to be a painter. You don't need to wear anything on your hands, no gloves. Keep the paint out from inside the bristles. There you go. So I just cover this. I just wrap it up a little bit, and then I cover the bowl that I'm using. And voila, easy. This is pushed down, won't dry up. If you got to run to the bathroom or whatnot, you're all set. Make it easy for yourself. So the desk got one coat on it. I got it painted all the way down. So let's let it dry. We'll see if there's any other repairs we need to make. And, uh, and then we'll get back to second coating it. Now here's a spot I was talking about. When I leaned it up against here, it got into the side of the paint. So, if it's wet, you can wipe it right off. But see how that's not, not wet, it's dry? Make your, your rag a little wet. And it'll come right off. That's also how you do the wet distressing as well. You just use a wet rag. So let's let this all dry. Yeah, so we're just going to wait and uh, second coat it. All right, we'll be right back. I think I'm going to do the second coat off camera because you guys watched the first coat. It's pretty simple. Uh, let me get the second coat on, 
and then uh, we'll get back to it. All right, we're back at it. It's been a couple of days. Today's Monday. I've done another coat. It's all covered up. We are going to, I've done a little wet distressing on here to kind of bring back the molding. And um, we're going to get to waxing it. Let's go. All right, this is what I use right here. Minwax. It's clear. So I just wipe it on, and then I wipe it right off. So I just keep keep a rag right with you. Don't, there's no reason to let it sit or do anything like that. You want to get it in there. You see, you're going to change the color, but as it dries, it will come back to its normal color. But you want to make sure that you really get it down in all the cracks especially if you're putting it on a painted surface. And I just do a little section at a time because you don't want it to be too hard to, to uh, rub off. And then just buff it off. And if it feels like the rag is sticking, Flip it over. Keep on turning your rag. You want it to be nice and smooth, and it's actually going to polish it. Give it a little bit of a buttery shine. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let's see. Can you guys tell the difference a little bit? Right there. See how nice and buttery it's looking? All right, let's get the rest of it done. I like to push the wax into the surface. Because if you don't push it into the painted surface, because this is this is chalk paint. So it's very porous. And if you don't push it down there, really get it into the paint, you're going to have all these streaky, weird marks. And you can see where it didn't actually get down into the paint. So just take your time. All right, and when I do the front here, I'm going to use a brush so I can really get it down in the grooves. Just save an old crappy brush. You can get a flat brush like this. It's cut right across. It's actually good for, um, for waxing. If not, just use any old brush. But you want to make sure you get it down in there real good. And the little bit of wet distressing that I've done is really going to pop out. Here, I'll do half of it and I'll show you. All right, I'm going to see if I can get a close-up. And you can see it's a little shiny here. See how you have a little bit of shine coming off that? And this side is very dull. And uh, it's very flat, obviously, because it's chalk paint. But this side here has a nice buttery look to it. See, you can see the shine right here. And then when you get across, it goes back to dull. All right, let's finish this up. All right, you guys see how it's uh, how it's going. So basically, people use different kind of waxes on their chalk paint. 
you have to keep on redoing it. A lot of them use salve. And this is flat. If you have kids, it's not going to work. You're going to have to keep on redoing it. It gets, it, it kind of dissolves and gets chalky again. This actually turns into a hard coating. So I like it. You got to put it on and buff it. The shinier you want, the more you buff it. Um, it dries hard. It's easy to use. The salves are good for inside the drawers and whatnot. Um, but like I said, this is my favorite so far. Um, it's easy to use, and it also makes a hard coating. Um, all my furniture in my house has this on top of it. I don't have any problems at all. All right, I'm going to finish this off, and then I'll show you the final piece. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see all the little spots here. It's kind of hard with the reflection. There's a lot of little white speckles all over the place. I'm going to try to... Um, disguise this a little better with a scratch coat. All right, let's get to it. I have to be very careful not to get this on the painted surfaces as I've already finished this desk. So let's just be very careful. I'm just trying to disguise some of the bad problems. You always want to go with the grain. I think that looks great. Always make sure you use your gloves because if you have anything on your fingers at all, boy, you're going to have a problem. So I'm going to leave this open for now. And we'll get back to it when it dries. All right, everyone. Here's the finished desk. Put the little lock back on here. This is all polished up. Handles are all polished up. All right, everyone. That's this piece all set. I will post some before and after pictures. Lovely piece, all the inside is completely finished. And I actually did a chair for the customer as well. Hang on, let me get it. I know the chair does not go with the desk, but they're both sentimental pieces to my customer. So I touched this up and refinished it to go along with the desk. I think they make a beautiful pair. If you guys want to follow along and see all the projects I do, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That helps me get my channel off the ground. I, uh, I appreciate you guys watching me. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Bye now.